Hello everybody. I'd like to talk today briefly, hopefully not too long, about how I got into banjo and some recommendations I would have for beginners, being that I am not far removed from being a beginner myself. <clears throat> so, I covered this on my stream, but I got into banjo primarily from my interest in folk and bluegrass music, I would say, from the 60s. Um, <clears throat> the bands I really enjoyed listening to, and still do enjoy listening to, their names were The Dillards and The Country Gentlemen. And of course there are others, but those are the primary two. I think the song for me that I really enjoyed the banjo in was a great song called The Whole World Round. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that was by the Dillards. Um, soon I discovered YouTube banjo content. There was a man on YouTube, I cannot find his channel anymore, but I will make sure to put it in the description if I can find it. If not, I'll sort of link some of his information. I'm reasonably confident he has a book that he published, and I know I can find him on Vimeo. But his name uh, is Patrick Costello. To my knowledge, he is deaf or very hearing impaired, um, but he's a great guitar and banjo player. I learned claw hammer banjo from him, or frailing banjo from him, and I the thing I liked about what he taught was that you don't need to really even be that melodic when learning to play banjo at first. You can just learn chords. You can learn a C chord. You can learn a D7 chord. You can learn a D chord. You can learn an F chord, an A7, an A minor, an E minor, and you've got a lot of songs down with that. And, and that helps you sort of just learn the the uh, overhand, frailing, claw hammer, whatever you like to call it. Just learn the rhythm uh, and practice moving in between strings. I could demonstrate that in a, in a future vid video, but <clears throat> that's that's one thing I would I would start off with. Uh, I, I want to keep this sort of brief, so I'm going to continue sort of with my story. So I got a during good time. During good times are good. I, I, I hesitate to say good for me now, but it was a banjo and it worked and I learned on that. I have nylon strings on it now and it doesn't really work with that, especially with the bridge that it has. The way you set up a banjo is very important. Uh, at that point I learned claw hammer and then sort of discovered more banjo content, eventually found Clifton Hicks, uh, who is one of my main inspirations, one of the people I learn a lot of banjo songs from. <clears throat> and uh, I eventually transitioned to sort of using nylon strings a lot more. Uh, the During Good Time comes with metal strings. A lot of modern banjos use metal strings, and metal strings are fine, but I just I prefer nylons, and I think a lot of people in sort of the old-time banjo community prefer nylon strings. <laughs> but it's not necessarily a must. It, it's definitely a very different feeling and a very different sound, however. So, yeah, I, as I already mentioned, Deering is fine for a, a beginner, although it's not the ideal. Um, from what I've heard from people, they recommend for a beginner, if you're going to buy a new banjo, which I will talk about, get a Gold Tone AC1. <clears throat> I have not played one. I cannot evaluate it but that's what I've heard and I'm from the people I heard it from I'm gonna go with their recommendation however this leads into my next point uh, my first piece of advice really for getting into banjo first major piece of advice is sort of get acquainted with what music you like and I know you the music that you like can change but when you want to get a banjo for any specific reason. Make sure it's not just one song 
that makes you get it. Make sure there are other songs that you like that are able to be played on banjo. Perhaps there's an artist that you like, a musician that you like, such as Clifton Hicks, Aaron Stevens, uh, Blaine Chappelle are some of the ones I really like on YouTube. There are more. But m m make sure you sort of have a genre and even sort of a, a sub-genre of music. So within banjo, this bluegrass banjo, I can't really comment on that. Uh, this old time banjo, um, there's tenor banjos, so there's like jazz banjo even. Um, you can use banjo to play like bossa nova. Um, that's really sort of in the realm of tenor banjos. But for a five string open back banjo, which is what I sort of recommend you buy, and of course there are variations within that, it's mainly going to be sort of old time music, traditional music. Um, you can do blues, you can do, you know, a lot of Johnny Cash stuff, you know, I have a Johnny Cash song on my channel, but that sort of thing, um, that's going to be, you know, what you play, and then especially if you, if you take, um, an, a banjo that's older style, so sort of like what I play in a lot of my videos, the Gardner's Dulcimer's Minstrel Banjo, that's going to bring you back, you know, Especially if it's it's not fretted, it's going to provide a very unique sound, and you can play a lot of different music on that for sure. <clears throat> but you know, you need you need to to sort of be sure exactly of, of what you want, um, and that leads into my second piece of advice. Sorry, I have my phone here. Yeah, I, I sort of covered that. So identify what what sort of banjo you need. Um, Oh, I'm going to say, I'm going to recommend an open back for the type of music that I like. My preference would be an open back, fretted, five-string banjo that has the capability to be reset up for nylon strings. Um, and the gold tone AC1 may be sort of in that category. Uh, and then my final piece of advice, and I'll get into where you can find banjos right after this, is learn. Once you have your banjo, you need to learn. The best way to learn, in my opinion, and this is how I learn all my songs, I don't use tabs. Uh, I can read tabs if I put effort into it, but and, and I can read music as well. But I find that with the style of banjo playing that I do, it's more... I, I, I don't want to say authentic, but it's more rewarding to be able to get to a point where you can listen to a song and recreate it yourself, or, or watch somebody play it and, and sort of at the same time incorporate things that they do in the song. So the song I'm learning right now is Sourwood Mountain. I watched the Clifton Hicks lesson for it. I don't play it exactly like he does, but I still like the song. Uh, and that sort of leads me into my next point. Um, play songs your own way and don't just copy sort of mechanically what other people do. That's why I don't use tabs. Tabs can help you to get a song going, but I would just recommend not doing that. If you don't have a good ear, then that's fine. But if you have an, 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 any sort of musical ear at all, don't use tabs, is my recommendation. And <clears throat> so I'll post these links to all these people's channels down in the description. But I recommend listening to primarily, this is my favorite, and he's you know probably the biggest banjo player on YouTube right now, Clifton Hicks, Aaron Stevens, Blaine Chapel or Chappelle, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, one very good guy, his name is Sean Siley, Seely. I'm not sure how to say his last name. I want to say Siley, Seely, I would say Seely. He has a very good rendition of Brother Green that I like, and Hills of Mexico. Kyle H, he's good. This is not a banjo band per se, but the second South Carolina string band, they do a lot of sort of old time uh, and minstrel show music. Of course, there's a playlist that I have on my channel, uh, My Banjo Favorites, that's a good place to look. 
uh, David Colgan, sort of again, old time music, and then Justin Gibbs. And there are many other channels, which if I have not mentioned here and I remember, while doing the description, I will link. And that leads me to my final point. Um, there's a lot of places where you can get banjos if you're looking to get one. I would not, I would recommend against buying one new. The only one I would buy new is the Gold Tone AC1. If you're looking for just a cheap five string, go on, please go on Facebook Marketplace. Please go on Craigslist. Please go even on eBay. Find something near you, find a banjo that someone bought and has not used. A five string banjo, open back or resonator, and you just try to find one that someone's selling for like 300. If you wanted to just get a cheap one, uh, and just just get it out of the way and just get one and start learning do not buy one new if you don't absolutely have to however if you start learning and you find you enjoy it and you learn a lot of songs there are many different places to buy banjos many different brick and mortar stores to buy banjos many of these stores do have websites as well but one big website is banjo barn ebay is going to be a big one there's a store in Rochester, New York, I think. Renuncio's Uptown. They're a good one. There's Reverb. Reverb is very big. I'm pretty... I think that's... I think they have a store in Michigan. I want to say Ann Arbor or Lansing. Regardless, they have a website. And then Retrofet. That's sort of a novelty banjo store that's in Brooklyn. Facebook Marketplace I already mentioned, that's going to be, you know, there's a lot of random stuff on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist as well, eBay, um, and then I recently got two banjos from a store in Utah called Intermountain Banjo, and they have a good, very good site as well, so there are many other ones, but my main recommendation is if you're a beginner, look on Facebook Marketplace, look on Craigslist, look on like eBay. Uh, if you really just want to get one and, and, and just start playing. I would, I would advise against getting a new one if you're not sure whether you'll like it or not. This is all I'm going to say. So I'll put more info in the description. I hope I didn't ramble on too long. Thank you.